This video is sponsored by Trugal Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman will lose report today, April 23rd, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had three strong M-class solar flares already today, and we had two M-flares just before the end of the day yesterday. So within the last 24 hours, we've had five M-class solar flares that were Earth-directed. Now, yesterday... Right here, we had a 1.6 class solar flare. Uh, it was an alpha, beta, gamma, fairly complex sunspot, 3638, headed for the limb. That was followed by this M1 solar flare here. And that happened right before the end of the day here at 2315. That was from Sunspot Group AR3645 and M1, also Alpha, Beta, Gamma, so fairly complex. And then we start the day today. We started the day here at 3 UTC time with a 3.5 M-class solar flare here. It was from a sunspot that has just come around the limb and is newly named it's sunspot AR3654, and it's alpha beta. Not very complex at all, but it did generate this M3.6 solar flare here. That was followed about 8 UTC time by an M3 solar flare, also generated by the not-so-complex alpha beta AR3654. Now we've just had our third M flare of the day and our fifth M flare in the last 24 hours. That was an M3 class solar flare right here. And it came from sunspot AR3638, a semi-complex alpha beta gamma sunspot that's moving with a large group of sunspots that's almost around our far limb. Let's take a look at all that. So this was not assigned when I opened this program. It has been now. This last actual explosion. 3638 is no longer complex. It's just alpha beta, but it did generate in between a M2.9 and an M3 class solar flare just this moment. Now I was able to see that on GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager, as will you be able to. So, we've had five M-class solar flares in the last 24 hours, starting at 21.05 last night, two yesterday, this one as well at 22.59, and those, well, the first one was from AR3638. I thought it was complex. It has become not so complex. It's alpha beta now. The second M-class solar flare, right before... 0, 100 UTC time came out of 3645. It is still alpha beta gamma complex. And that was an M1 at 2259 to 2338, almost coming into today technically. Then we had 3654 pop up, a newly named sunspot, not so complex, alpha beta with an M3.5 at 306. We'll be able to see that. And then we also had a M3 from 3654 as well, not so complex at 8 UTC time. And we've just had either an M3 or an M2.9 out of AR3638, a sunspot group that was complex and is not complex any longer, just alpha beta, heading around the far limb. Let's take a look at that. Over to HMI Intensigram. 3654 right here, responsible for the last two larger M-flares. 
and we had 3638 step up and throw up a 2.9 as it becomes very close to the far limb. We also saw activity at a 3645 up here, which is still the only Alpha, Beta, Gamma, or semi-complex sunspot Earth facing. What do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 Earth facing sunspots. The record that I read about was 29 at one time. Head over to GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager. We see the M2.9 or M3 class solar flare pop off from sunspot AR3638, almost around the limb there. We also remember that we had that Earth-facing coronal hole yesterday, so we should see an uptick in solar winds by late this evening into tomorrow. All right, over here to SDO dashboard, one night through Angstrom's on the left here. Uh, today's the 23rd, so we'll skip ahead. And we're going to see one at three, one at eight, and one at 1700. Here comes the one at three. And y'all saw it happen right there. Huge. One at eight. Oof, it's already looped. Let me slow this down. I already had slowed this down. I don't know why it rebounded back. Very strange. All right, so here we go. We'll be able to see the times down here. This will be the 3 o'clock one right now. Bam. And there was, well, that must have been the sympathetic solar flare. And let's get us back to 8 UTC time. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we see another explosion right there. So now let's see if this brings us to 1700. I don't think it's going to. No, it stopped right before this last solar flare, the M2.9 or M3.0. So we got to see the first two M flares on this and the third M flare on GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager. All right, over to our D Region Absorption Prediction Center. We saw the first two flares on our SDO. We saw the last 2.9 or 3.0 flare out of AR. 3638 on our GOES solar ultraviolet imager. Now we're going to see that last flare here hit Central America, the Caribbean, uh, North America, which is part of Central America, and South America. And here we go right around 1730. Bang! Covered most of the U.S. and large parts of Colombia, Venezuela, etc. Remember, everyone's getting a dose of radiation because we're maintaining a very high sea level baseline, sea flare baseline. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't even know if Lasco C3 is working any longer, but let's take a look. We should see something happen here about 3 UTC time, which is right about now. Uh, I guess we see some action about 8. We didn't see a thing. So into 8 ETC time, you can watch this about now. We did see what looked like a halo eruption around 8. That was our biggest flare of the day. That was going to be the, well, second biggest flare of the day. That was the M3 flare. Very little to be seen. We do see plasma going every which way but loose on Lasco C3. It used to be, well, so much information. We could see exactly where the plasma was going, but that's just not the case anymore. NOAA and NASA say all is quiet, and they're expecting solar activity or a solar storm impact at some point tomorrow. If you all recall, the ESA has at 45 centimeters cubed of plasma yesterday, which never occurred. Very disappointing. Very quiet day to day. The highest reading we have on our KP index, which is a measurement of solar plasma and solar winds hitting Earth, or i.e. our satellite that orbits just above Earth, a 2.33. Very quiet day. And you guys know we like to check them. So what do we see here? Plasma just up and down all over the place. But high readings are in the ones. What is this? Five. So... 
minimal plasma all day long. This is a very strange solar wind event here. Uh, we go from, see if I can even get it over there, it won't even move over there. Isn't that crazy? It will not move over there. It's the missing data up here. So I don't know what has caused this, but we're talking about moving from about 380 up to 531 for about an hour time period. 531 to 380. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's going to be a half a million miles an hour difference. And you can see that the temperature actually reinforces this to be an actual event. Plasma moved up slightly too, but just to about 5 centimeters cubed, 5.5. And the data is missing for about two and a half hours. Not real cool, guys. With that said, minus this one hour period right here, where we see solar winds go crazy and increase by a half a million miles an hour, we see nothing else. No real events, although 555 kilometers per second is a very fast solar wind. And again, it's, well, temperatures shows us it's a real event. Quickly, looking at the back side of our sun, we have just a mess coming around. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more sunspot groups on their way around. And again, we have 15 sunspot groups named Earth facing. Wow. Taking a look at STO HMI magnetogram, hard to believe that this area here is popping off these M3 and M3.5 flares. Then we're having activity, of course, from AR3638, which is almost around the limb. Let's hope it doesn't blow big time and is not geoeffective towards Earth. This was taken at 7.06 Central Time this morning here in the U.S. You can see that the sunspot hasn't moved quite as close to the limb as you just saw it. That was the coronal hole and still is the coronal hole Earth-facing. This could be several days of solar winds that increase and this is sunspot group AR3654 that has been so nasty to us with two M flares thus far today. Moving over to NASA's Isla Goodard spiral with five M flare eruptions earth facing and a huge filament eruption directly earth facing. We see nothing modeled by NASA we do see that we're going to get hit by plasma starting on about the 24th, as we talked about. It looks like two days or more, maybe three days of plasma. And remember here we talked about how the flare intensifies, although they have it going much further south now, as it moves away from the source, which is pretty hard to do unless it's encountering another source. Now, scientists today did say they think that they found a huge planet. They're calling it Planet Nine, and we'll be doing that story in a bit. With all that said, what do we have? Well, we have three decent-sized M flares today, and we had two right at the end of the day yesterday, so we've had five M flares in the last 24 hours, with supposedly, according to the Iswa Goodard Spiral, Nothing inbound. If I do hear about any chrome mass ejection or plasma inbound, I will let you know. But we are expecting plasma tomorrow that was called out about seven days ago that looks to last for two or three days solid. God bless you guys. Please share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.